there's been some pretty incredible goalies in the National Hockey League. Patrick Waugh winning the cup in his rookie year as well as the Conn Smythe, amassing four cups and three Conn Smythe trophies, and then getting hung out to dry, pulling himself and telling team president he'll never play for the Habs again. He was traded to Colorado, went on to win two cups with the Avalanche to prove he's one of the greats. The NHL's winningest goalie, Martin Brodeur, 691 career wins. Also the NHL all-time leader in shutouts with 125 donuts. This guy changed the way goaltending was played. They put the trapezoid in because of Marty Brodeur. If, if you were a goalie growing up in the 90s, you idolized Martin Brodeur. I could sit here for hours talking about the great goalies that the National Hockey League has seen. Ken Dryden, who had a record of 258, 57, and 74. No, that's not a typo. The guy lost more in overtime than he did in regulation, and it also doesn't hurt he has six cups in eight years. Is that good? Jacques Plante, legendary Canadian's goalie, known for making the goaltender mask a regular piece of equipment. Absolute innovator. We got guys like Andrew Hammond, who once went 20 and one and got a lifetime supply of cheeseburgers from McDonald's. And David Ayers, a 42 year old Zamboni driver who beat the Maple Leafs. Wait, not them. They just lost to a 42 year old Zamboni driver who works for the team! Those goalies are all great in their own right even Andrew Hammond and David Ayers, but there's one goaltender who's in a tier of his own. If I needed a goalie to stop a puck in triple overtime of the Stanley Cup Final, make one save, stop one rubber disc, without a doubt, it would be the dominator, Dominic Hasek. Hasek wasn't a starting goalie until he was 27. Brodeur and Waugh both had their names etched on the Stanley Cup and established themselves as two titans of goaltending by the age of 27. Hasek invented a style that has been replicated by no one. Flopping, flailing, the octopus, whatever you want to call it. Whatever it took to stop the puck, Hasek did it. For time's sake, I'll be comparing the stats of Waugh, Hasek, and Brodeur, leaving them as arguably the top three. Argue away in the comments about how some goalie in the 50s these should be in my top three. Go for it. That should be fun. Marty Brodeur leads the way with close to 700 wins, followed behind Patrick Waugh and then Dominic Hasek. There's quite a drop off with the wins from Brodeur and Waugh and Hasek all the way at only 389. Once again, that's because he wasn't a starting goalie until he was 27. But before we get started, stats aren't everything. There's goalies with better stats, more wins like Waugh and Brodeur, for example. But for pure goaltending skill, doing whatever it took to make the save, in my opinion, Dominic Hasek is the best goaltender the NHL has ever seen. I want to start in 1998, the Winter Olympics in Nagano, Japan. 33-year-old Hasek played six games for the Czech Republic with a goals against average of 0.97. Yes, 0.97 with a save percentage of 963 and two shutouts. That included beating the powerhouse Team Canada in the shootout as well as beating the Russians in the gold medal game 1-0. A Russian team that had the likes of both Bure brothers, Sergei Fedorov, Gonchar, Yashin, just to name a few. He shut them out 1-0 to secure the gold medal for his home country, the first in Olympic hockey history for the Czech Republic, and shocked the hockey world. Once Hasek got hot in that tournament, it was basically over. A lot of people forget that the Czech Republic beat Canada, they beat Russia, and they have an Olympic gold medal. It's pretty impressive. Usually when you think of Olympic gold medals, you think of Team Canada, Team USA, Russia obviously, but Czech Republic, they have a gold medal to their own, right? Dominic Hasek was drafted in the 10th round by the Chicago Blackhawks, and they had Eddie Balfour. They didn't need him, so they shipped him off to Buffalo for a no-name goalie. I don't know, he had 90 games of NHL experience. That trade for Hasek is one of the worst ever and it doesn't get talked about enough. During his time with Buffalo, Dominic Hasek was the heart and soul of that team. Hasek dragged the Sabres into the playoffs year in and year out. Out of the nine seasons Hasek played in Buffalo, he helped him into the playoffs eight times. Mind you, the Buffalo Sabres were not the star-studded avalanche with Sackick, Forsberg, Foote, Hey Duke, the list goes on and on. Or the incredibly tough defensive monster of the New Jersey Devils with Scott Stevens and Scott Niedermeyer. 
Hasek was so dominant, he was so unconventional, you couldn't help but watch his style. Flopping his head back, throwing a stick, making a ridiculous blocker save behind his head, sliding out 15 feet to meet a player on a breakaway. Unconventional is really the only way to put it. Former players and coaches were quoted saying that he would even get upset at his own teammates for scoring on him on practice. The guy just wanted to win, he wanted to make the save no matter what it took. You can also ask Marion Gabrick about sliding out to meet the player 15 feet on a breakaway. Here's a breakaway, look out! Focusing on the 98-99 NHL season, the Sabres were led by Miroslav Shatan with 66 points. It's not a bad year. He was 26th in league scoring that year, 26th, followed by 56-point Mike Pekka and 50-point Michael Grosnick. Needless to say, they needed to keep the puck out of their net to win games because they weren't scoring a ton and Hasek was a brick wall. The defense that Hasek had to play behind was never star-studded. In the nine years he played for Buffalo, he he never really had a star D-man. There were some good ones, Jason Woodley, Alexi Zidnik, Jay McKee, but there was no Scott Stevens, there was no Scott Niedermeyer, no Adam Foote. There wasn't really a whole lot to work with and Hasek was hung out to dry often. The defenseman he had just got the job done and if they had to give up an odd man rush, they were kind of okay with it because they relied on Hasek to make the save and more than often he did that. In 98-99, he had a goals against average of 1.87 with a defensive core consisting from the likes of Jason Woodley, Alexi Zidnik, and Jay McKee. And there was some other guys I've never heard of on that team as well. No disrespect to those guys, but he really didn't have a lot to work with. During that 98-99 season, Hasek was so dominant in the postseason, leading the Sabres to the Stanley Cup Final with a record of 13-6, and with a goals against average of 177. At the end of his career, Hasek had two Stanley Cups, and it probably should have been three in 98-99, that same year where he dragged that team to the postseason, dragged them to the Stanley Cup Final, Brett Hall's foot in the crease in triple overtime of Game 6, I'm sorry, look away Sabres fans, smashed the hopes and dreams of Hasek's attempt to bring the Cup to Buffalo. His foot was in the crease. Come on. When Hasek was on, he was on. In nine seasons in Buffalo, he won an NHL record six Vesna trophies as the league's top goalie. In my personal opinion, Hasek's most impressive achievement is winning the Hart Trophy. Twice, back to back, only six goalies in the over 100 year NHL history have won the Hart Trophy. Roy Waters, Chuck Rayner, Al Rollins, Jacques Plante, Dominic Hasek, and Jose Theodore. That's it. Hasek did it twice. Realizing a cup probably wasn't going to happen in Buffalo after years of putting the team on his back, Hasek requested a trade. He made it clear his goals were to win a Stanley Cup in Detroit. He accomplished those goals. Twice. Where he coasted to two Stanley Cups with, well, a star studded cast to say the least, multiple Hall of Famers, and Hasek got his name etched on Lord Stanley, finally. This entire video seems like I've praised Hasek and dissed the teams that Buffalo put in front of him. It's not really the case. I just think as far as NHL skill, as far as goaltending skill goes, Hasek was the best to do it. With what he had in front of him to work with, it's amazing he put up the numbers that he did. Hasek is simply the best to strap on the pads. He took multiple mediocre Buffalo teams and made them contenders coming ever so close to the promised land, putting the team on his back, having stars in front of you is awesome obviously a great recipe for success, it's proven time and time again, even Hasek needed the stars in Detroit to get it done. Just seeing how incredible Hasek was with the little help he had in Buffalo, he basically created an entire genre of unorthodox goaltending that makes him simply the best to ever do it. People also forget he was a 10th round draft pick. Pretty crazy to think a 10th round pick by the Blackhawks would turn out to revolutionize the goaltending position. This debate has been going on for years. Who's the best goalie? Who is it? Is it Jacques Plante? Is it Ken Dryden? Is it Hasek? Wah? Brodeur? Is it David Ayers? Well, in the comments, I want you guys to debate it. If you think I'm right, agree with me. If you think I'm wrong, let me know why. Using the argument that Marty Brodeur or Patrick Waugh has more wins, thus making them the better goalie, I don't think that's really a valid argument. I think pure skill, pure goaltending skill, if you needed 
needed one goalie to make one save, triple overtime, Game 7, Stanley Cup Final, who are you going to have in net to make that save? For me, it's a no-brainer. They called the guy the dominator. He dominated. Even if you don't agree with me that Hasek is the greatest goaltender to ever strap on the pads, I think we can agree that Buffalo needs to bring back these jerseys. Can we agree on that?